Welcome back to my channel. This is Psychic Medium Raymond Guzman, and today I'm doing celeb mashups and giving you the psychic tea or the psychic insight uh, on some uh, hot topics today. So be sure to get your tea cups ready. Uh, also, be t uh, tune in later today because there will be the Tea with Spirit show that I will be doing. So we have several different things coming out today. Uh, but I wanted to start off the morning um, for those of you that would be tuning into this show of the Celeb Mashups um, about what happened on The Bachelor. Now, I don't watch The Bachelor, but there's a lot of my friends and viewers out there and my uh soul family out there you guys that may watch the the bachelor um and so there's a lot of tea to talk about so this is colton underwood he is the the latest person you know on the bachelor and the girl on the right is cassie now apparently he um he sends the final two women home during the bachelor finale and he, he wanted Cassie, but Cassie rejected him. Again, this is my understanding of what's going on here. So I'm going to kind of give you a little psychic insight, what I see about Cassie, what I see about uh, Colton. When I get into Colton's soul, um, you know, I don't know anything about him, but I do feel like he is someone who is a very confused when I get into his soul level. Um, I feel like he's not sure exactly what he wants when it comes to women. Um, he did see the perfect package you know the blonde hair blue eyed girl you know and that's kind of the style or the type of person that he would you know typically go after um not that he did you know he wouldn't have anything to do with a brunette but um, I do feel like for him, there's a lot of superficiality a lot of about the looks um you know who he's with um of the appearances and whatnot that's kind of like what i see for him when it comes to love it i feel like he's going to be kind of unfulfilled for a while he will have someone eventually you know that he is in a relationship with but it feels very much so like he is kind of you know just not certain on what he wants and i feel like he felt some kind of connection with cassie I do feel like they're very much like almost what they would mimic, almost like twin flames. But Cassie's priorities are a little bit different. She is a little less confused. I feel like she's very sure of what she wants as well. But it's not Colton uh, in any means. So, you know, if she would ever to decide to date him, you know, that's quite a, like a possibility. But I feel like in most cases with her... Um, she's definitely on a different wavelength and she's going to just focus on herself right now and kind of, you know, uh, putting herself back out into the dating world or, you know, just getting herself back out in, in general. Um, she has goals, you know, and I just feel like it doesn't mash up or it doesn't align well with Colton. So, um, this definitely was a surprise to a lot of people that watched it, but I do feel like there's a lot of ridicule for Colton that is coming, you know, and not just ridicule, but I think a lot of, you know, the people that the girls that he would have turned away are having, you know, a field day with this kind of like, you can't, you know, say, but just to say that, you know, some of them may be feeling a little bit like, haha, you know, the joke's on you um, because, you know, he turned them away and whatnot. You know, there's some, some bitterness here. Um, but I, I really don't feel like Taisha and Hannah really, you know, were expecting this at all. Whatever the situation is, um, you know, I feel like he has some instability. Whether or not it was staged, you know, where he, they say that he was, you know, running out from that, you know, and he went running. Um, he jumped a fence to get away from the camera, supposedly, but... Whatever the situation is, if it was staged, which I feel like it was, um, there is some instability in him and some anger issues as well that are deep down on, on, in the surface. And I feel like that is what's going to always be uh, an issue in his relationships until he would change that tra trajectory and actually get that under control. Um, it all has to do about his attitude, the way that he sees things and the way that he treats, you know, women completely. For him, you know, um, I feel like in his relationships in the past, uh, regardless of what he's said on, you know, on the show, um, I, I do get, you know, he's had some some issues where, you know, if things become too heated or he's getting scrutinized uh, or questioned too much, you know, 
there is a like a cop out for him you know of escaping the situation and not really confronting it and this is something again i think a lot of people that are tuning into this you know thousands and millions of, of viewers on tv um would be feeling like there's something you know definitely wrong with him that he is not you know fully a uh, being stable when it comes to, you know, relationships and, and handling rejection or handling something, because that is like a big ego, you know, for the ego, that's a huge, huge, um, setback to your ego, a blow to your ego for those, you know, people that like Colton, I feel like he has a huge ego. Uh, like I said, superficiality, the looks, his body, um, you know, appearance, um, it's all about that. But that doesn't make him a bad person. He's a really good guy, and I feel like he will find someone. But I really feel like all his relationships are subject to fail if he's not careful in addressing those issues that he has, which is basically at the soul level, and him um, not running out, you know, and handling, being able to handle stress and being able to handle rejection. Those two things are things that he is going to have to encounter. And I think those of you that are tuning out here, would be able to relate to this in your own day-to-day -day life because I think so many of us have experienced rejection, whether it was from another person that you had a crush on or it's been a person who you were best friends with and you, you know, you've had feelings for them and you've come out to them and it just, it doesn't work out. You know, they reject you or you've, you know, you applied for a job, you went on an interview or second interview and you've been rejected. You know, it doesn't just, uh, boil down to a relationship you know we face rejection every single day in our life but we have to be able to kind of accept that now a lot of people will say well, a lot of this is scripted and it is you know a lot of this is scripted on how it's going to play out on the show because it is after all a show but you know apart from the, what is scripted and what what was you know done i'm giving you what i see at the soul level for both of these so with Cassie, you know, she has some high standards of what she is looking for and what she's wanting. And I feel like she doesn't like being rejected either. That's something for her as well, you know. And in many ways, you know, she knew, I feel like she knew in her heart that her and um, and Colton were not, you know, meant to be together in the grand scheme of things. And so... It's just a very hard, hard thing, you know, for all of them, because I think a lot of these people that, like I said in the interview that I had uh, the other day um, with Sylvia News, and I published that article, uh, it's on my community page, and it's on my in Instagram as well, if you want to go there, or my public Facebook page, but, you know, I get asked often in my readings, you know, what is the most sought out, sought after question that people ask, and it's about love. Love is the universal language. It is what everyone wants, you know, or desires, or it's like the the revolving door, a universal revolving door. Everyone is at some point in their life is going to want to be with someone unless, you know, you just have given up completely. But for the most part, a lot of people have fears that they're going to be alone, that they want love. And ultimately that is what, you know, we survive on it's almost like a survival skill for a lot of us and if the lack of being loved and not being with a partner is scary to a lot of people and people want to know you know when they're going to find their soulmate when they're going to be happy because love makes people feel happy but as i've said before you know it starts on the inside and we have to love ourselves unconditionally and get ourselves out of the roadblocks and the boxes that we've put ourselves in so many people out in the world are putting themselves in a box uh, of what love is considered to be and it's very convoluted and it's also uh it makes you feel to a certain point you know that because what we see on TV sometimes is not realistic. So it skews the way that we see love and people want what they see on TV or they want to live vicariously through these characters, you know, these people, these celebs that are on TV. And that's not really real life. You know, a lot of this is staged. But when it comes down to it, love is not perfect. It's painful. There are, you know, uh, there's rejection. There's there's uh, disagreements. Um, and the list goes on and on and on. But ultimately that is the the biggest question that we all have but will these two eventually find love cassie and colton i do feel like they will i do see that 
But again, there will be issues in the relationships that they don't address these certain things for them. And like I said, with Cassie, she has set her standards very high, which is not a bad thing, but she will need to kind of like, you know, uh, compromise because the perfect person, there's no such thing as a perfect, perfect person out there. You know, we all have flaws, etc. So that's just being realistic. All right, let's get into the next topic of T. All right. And those of you who have been asking, I haven't done a really a psychic reading on Scott Disick or Sophia Ritchie, but, you know, there's been a lot of questions about the relationship here recently. Um, and, you know, oh, you know, where is it going? Does Scott really love Sophia? Does Sophia really love Ritchie? Um, does Sophia really love Scott? And, you know, it's very, um, very mur <laughs> murky. Uh, when it comes to this relationship and where it's going, um, there's a lot of codependency on both of these, on Scott and Sophia. I feel like she is the stronger one in the relationship. Scott is someone who is, you know, loved. He's been hurt and he has children and he's, Courtney will always be, Courtney Kardashian will always be his first love, his true love. And regardless of who he's with, I feel like that is always going to, He's always going to have like an idea or a way that he sees his other, you know, his new partner and the expectations that she would have to live up to. Uh, you know, oddly enough, when I look at this picture, it I don't know if you guys can see it, but I see a huge resemblance of um, Courtney and Sophia. It looks like Sophia looks just like her in some ways. You know, if you take the blonde hair and you would put it jet black, you know, and maybe fill in her eyebrows, she looks a lot like Courtney which is very, very ironic. But um, when it comes to Scott in uh, his love life, he's going to continue to have problems. Uh, I don't see true happiness. I do feel like Sophia does help him and it's a coping mechanism and it's convenient because this is, he doesn't want to be alone. His greatest fear is being alone in life and not just being alone in life, but being not loved and hated by his kids and um, by Courtney, you know, by all means, but I feel like Courtney does love him at some, you know, to some extent, and like I said, he's the father of her children, and they will always have that bond and that connection, so he kind of has accepted, you know, that Courtney has moved on, um, you know, people have asked, will they ever get back together, you know, I really feel like Courtney is past that, but it wouldn't surprise me if she would, you know, give him a fourth or fifth chance, you know, um, regardless of the situation down the road, you know, but I don't feel like they would be an exclusive couple or something that it's like going back to how they used to be. But I do feel like he is happy with Sophia and Sophia is happy with him. There are going to be some disagreements. There's going to be some things that, you know, she's not happy with, but I do feel like deep down, she is someone that's very strong and holding him together. And he kind of feels, you know, more supported than he did at the at the latter part when he was already, you know, ending what he had with, with Courtney. I do feel like in this scenario, you know, in this case, there's a lot of unity uh, between these two and they're going to keep continuing to have these adventures and do things, you know, as couples would. Um, but there's a lot of scrutiny that it, the problem is that the paparazzi and the media are always going to kind of try to tear them apart. And to some point, if they're not careful, with what is out there, it's a strong possibility that they could break up at some point within the next two years and Scott would move on to another partner. Um, and I'm just keeping it real. But again, the, like I said, the future is unwritten. And I know that Scott has a thing for psychics. He not, you know, he's kind of like a believer, but you know, on one of the episodes on the Kardashians, he didn't make fun of a guy who was a psychic um, because of the information that was being given. I don't feel like he understands the spiritual world or he's kind of a skeptic in many ways. So it's not like, you know, me sitting here and talking about him and giving insight. It's not something he's necessarily going to believe, you know, and I'm not here to make anyone believe in what I do. But like I said, this is what I see for him. A lot of sadness, a lot of reverting back to old periods uh, and old. Uh, if he's not careful, he can revert back to what he used to be, the vices that he used to have, you know, and that are still around. But I do feel like he has kind of, you know, been a little bit more focused on his kids and his family and with Sophia and 
um, being a business mogul because that's what he is. You know, he's very much a professional in his own personal life. So, you know, he's trying to clean up his life and get it get it together. And I feel like Sophia like is a very strong influence uh, with him. She does love him, and I do feel like she wants to have children eventually um, from Scott, you know, but again, this is something that is up to see how far their relationship will be going, but I do feel like their relationship is going to be tested, and it could be that Sophia um, is definitely going to be noticing some changes in him, and with Scott, you know, he's very a attractive he's someone that is a very handsome so there's a lot of women that would throw themselves at him and again this is going back to what were some of the issues between him and courtney if he's not careful a lot of these women could come into and kind of be like what happened between tristan and chloe you know where um you know if he's not careful women are going to come into the picture flirt with him if he flirts back you know that's kind of a sign of disrespect i do feel like they have a mutual understanding and sophia's not really the the jealous jealous type you know she kind of understands she knows where she stands and where her her position is in scott's life but again media will kind of spin things out if he's not careful so him being sober and him you know sticking to the new scott of who he is is very very important especially in this relationship so um that is the the brief tea on scott disick and sophia ritchie now let's get into the last hot topic or celeb mashup for today okay this was given to me by a lot of people they sent me links yesterday regarding jennifer lopez and a rod and apparently he gave her a very very expensive engagement ring if you can see that engagement that bobble <laughs> it's a huge huge diamond huge but you know jennifer you know she's been married before she's had several engagement rings several wedding rings so it's like you know for her it's beautiful and I think it's really great that they're, you know, engaged to get married. But <laughs> I have to say this, like I've said it before, I don't know if this will be her last marriage or if it will even last. Like I said, even though some people said they're soulmates, I kind of feel like they're not in many ways because, again, they both have history. They both um, are older. Of course, they're both older and more mature, but, you know for jennifer there's always going to be her her family coming first and i feel like you know i don't know i just feel like in some ways this relationship is right at the moment but in some ways i just i, I don't feel like it's going to work out and again you know i'm not god and i'm not here to judge them at all that's not you know psychically when I tune into them, they both have, and I've done a reading on Jennifer Lopez. You can find it on my playlist uh, channel. And I've said this before and I stick to it, you know. So if they get married, this is kind of like something like a Justin Bieber, Haley uh, Baldwin situation, you know. They are doing it, but it's more of um, of media hype, you know. It's more of like a business arrangement, uh, more, you know, or they feel some kind of love, you know. A remote chance of love what they feel like it's true love but it's like after you you know you exhaust like you want something so much and then you buy it and then when you wear it after that you know that kind of dies off the luster of it and the want of it and that's kind of how i feel this relationship and what is coming through uh from spirit when i tune into these two people they're high prolific uh actor she's an actress and she is a, a singer you know a performer he's an ex-athlete you know and heaven knows what what he's going a businessman now you know whatever he's venturing into and so it's just like um yeah their their relationship is just i don't know it's just it's weird it's it's very weird when i tune in i don't feel like people say oh they're soulmates oh they're you know it's true love but you know it's just kind of you know i don't know i, I don't know it just doesn't feel right and i feel like a lot of people are rooting for them to be this fairy tale couple and whatnot but the same thing like i said that's happened in her past relationships because what she's been with was it um with mark anthony and then with just a lot of, of p diddy combs and you know and the list goes on and on she was with so many people um and then what was it um 
that guy, I can't remember his name. It's not Brad, but it's uh, Ben. Was it Ben Affleck? I think it was that. That was Ben. And they used to call her, uh, call them Benifer. <laughs> so, like I said, she's had her, you know, her her relationships in the past, but she has kind of like a trajectory. And I feel like in her, um, for those of you that have pulled her life chart, etc., you know, I feel like in her life, you know, she reminds me so much of like. Uh, Elizabeth Taylor in many ways on her marriages and kind of I feel like how she will wind up eventually is being single with her kids you know and and not really focused anymore after this after Aaron um, because she is reaching that point where she's kind of just tired of men being the same way not that Aaron is going to cheat on her or anything like that but you know, we'll have to have to sit down and just wait and be patient and see how things unfold because people get married all the time. But nowadays, you know, do marriages really last? That's the question. And in most cases, they don't. In some cases, they do. But for some, when you have a person that has been married so many times or been in so many relationships, it kind of is like a, you know, a pattern and those patterns are almost like cycles that keep repeating themselves and for her like i said in her psychic reading i feel like this is very karmic in nature all of her relationships will end in an unhealthy place until again she is single you know i don't feel like she will ever be in a fully happy relationship and we all thought that she was going to be happy with mark anthony when she was you know with him and they had their twins she had the twins or she had the children you know, a lot of people thought that she was going to be happy and um, that didn't end up working out either. So I wish them the best of luck and I really do hope that this, uh, you know, works out for them. And I really, really like her engagement ring. It's so pretty. Um, so that is the tea and the daily mashup from uh, me for the celeb mashup so thank you so much for tuning in if you did like this show please give it a thumbs up also be sure to follow me on facebook and instagram and if you would like to book a private reading with me you can go to my website it's www.raymondguzman.net forward slash shop also don't forget to tune in tonight to tea with spirit i will be doing that show and i will be posting that here shortly the link so um we can all have a live chat tonight on my channel so blessings and love and light have an amazing day or night wherever you are in the world